Okay, we're going to make a sphere, and a sphere is nothing more than being round all the way. So to start off, I'm not going to let you watch a whole bunch of chips, but we make a cylinder about the diameter of what you want. And this is a different work holding tool. Normally when I use a spindle, I have chucks. I like to use a chuck on a spindle because it provides more support. It'll help, you know, if you take the end off, it'll actually stand there by itself. You wouldn't want to run it like that, but it will, and it does keep vibration down. But since we're doing a no chuck holding, we're going to do this this way. This one has three prongs, kind of made for coarse wood. This wood I brought tonight is a spalted, but as some of you know, there's a fine line between being spalted and rotten. You know, so this is kind of, this is pretty much on the borderline, but it makes it easy to cut and you can do things pretty fast. So we're going to figure out what our diameter is. It's, that's about the size ball we want to make. So it's that big. And now I'm going to scare y'all. Let's see. Hmm. Looks like about eight centimeters. Now have I messed everybody up? <laughs> about two years ago, I took every tape measure in my shop, including my table saw. I changed all my measure. I changed everything to metric. Because... I hate fractions. I do not like fractions. Uh, can somebody tell me which is bigger, 6.5 centimeters or 7, millimeters, 7 centimeters? Which is bigger? 7? Okay, which is bigger, 3 eighths or 27 sixty-fourths? <laughs> well, I thought y'all knew the American system. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> well, that's... Anybody figured it out yet? <laughs> okay, anyway, we're back to about 8 centimeters here. There are no fractions on this. Everything's in tenths. So I'm going to put it a line here and a mark 4 centimeters on either side of it, which gives me my diameter. The, the type, the way I'm cutting this is the way David Springett does it. And I don't know to who taught him. Different people do it different ways, but this was is a pretty easy way for me. Okay, you take this outside. I mark it with a black march lot. Our four-inch lines, we cut it down here. Cut it down so you got an ear on each side. This marks the end of our sphere, and this is the diameter. Now we've got this and this way, and it should be pretty close. You don't have to be exact, but pretty close. I'm going to put this one in there so you don't have to watch me do all that chipping wood out everywhere since I've already got that done. There's another fine piece of spalted wood, almost too far spalted. Hope this will go down far enough, yep. Now we've got, we've got one part of our sphere round. Our cylinder part is round. We've got our ends done. And when you look at a ball, you look at the ends of it like this. You know, it's pretty flat on the ends. And then it just slowly tapers away till it gets to the other end. So we're going to kind of leave that that away. And then we cut it off, cut those ears off. Oh, one other thing. I've got a segmented piece here I'll pass around. And whoever's the first, Sharon doesn't count. <laughs> she knows. First one to figure out how to figure out all the angles on this, I'll give them one of the spheres. So, try that. Hmm? <laughs> Never mind. Okay. Don't, don't mess with him. Don't, don't mess with him, huh? He's gonna get it. He's gonna. Okay. He may already have it. He's a math professor. 
Oh, okay, good. Well, geometry, that's all about turning, isn't it? Let's see, well, you can explain about chords and angles and things like that on here too, okay. Well, let's crank this thing up a little bit. I don't know how fast I'm going, but I go a little faster where I'm scared and then I back off a little bit. Uh, this is a tool I like to use. I didn't invent it, but I stole the idea from Don Ward. It's a kind of a skew that's rounded on both sides but it doesn't have any of the bad things that a skew does. It doesn't catch as bad. But it will make a nice... Hmm? It's kind of like a scraper, but it's sharpened like a skew. And I saw him using it doing pins, and I like to never got his attention to find out what in the heck the thing was. And then he said, I don't know who invented it, but somebody did. But anyway, what we're going to do is just take this down and make it round. And you see it kind of cuts like a skew. You don't have to be perfect, but you don't want to go too far. And probably what you'll do like me is end up with it kind of looking like one of those brass toilet bowl floats instead of a sphere. But we're going to fix that. We're going to fix that. Or maybe we'll just make a toilet bowl float. I do have a tub full of parts that look like they might be something to the toilet. Okay, then we got it. You can actually, if you want to, David Springhead actually does his. He takes a template and makes it all just perfectly round before he ever cuts it off. I don't do that because... Every step on here, your accuracy, how well you can make the sphere, depends on your eyes. Because what we're doing what's called chasing the ghost on it. You'll see when I put another one on here in a minute. And when you get closer down to the diameter of the sphere, that ghost is harder to see. That's why this right here is a good size, and until you get to a size, it scares you. But when you start doing a little one, say smaller than a golf ball, it's hard to see that ghost on there and make a really good sphere. That's when it's time to get one of those jigs. And you've seen those. Then you can then you can make a nice little sphere. Okay. Now we're going to go ch -ch 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 and cut that off. See how fast I did that? I'm sure you didn't want to watch me sawing. Now then, I made this. Since we're not going to use a chuck tonight... <laughs> You can use a chuck. That works pretty good. You can put a piece of PVC, PVC pipe in a chuck and it'll work. It's the same difference. But how accurate you make your sphere is to how round this is. And then you do not want it to bottom out in there. So you kind of got to make this to match the diameter. I mean, if you get exactly the diameter, it's going to go get go in there and jam on you. Oops, i got to get this other piece. Oop, that's not what we're, there it is. Time for this big paperweight. How many people live between McKinney and Denton? Do you know? Yeah, how many? I mean, it's getting like a its own individual little city now. I couldn't believe the traffic out there. Hmm? You're going to back up? No, I went. Oh. <laughs> Let's see. Which one of these do I want to use? Let's use the one with the big wormhole in it. That works. That can tell you that one's a little bit used up. Ah. Where did I put the? Where did I put my knocker bar? There it is. I gotta take this out too. I guess it helps to always put stuff back in the same place, and then you know where it is. Run into that at home sometimes. No, yeah, looking around for stuff. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? 
Yeah, there it is. Yep. Uh, That's hard to say. Hard to say, isn't it? <laughs> the bad bug, bed, bled, something anyway. Uh, it's a one by eight nut with a washer welded to it, a wood flange, and then it's trued up, and then I cut and screwed a piece of PVC pipe on it, and then trued that up. Because I want it to run pretty true. True it runs, the better it's going to work. And you see I've got a stripe. I know that diameter there is round. Everything else is kind of cockeyed, but that's round. So I want it to spin with that in the center. Part of my work holding thing here because I don't want to... That just helps hold it. A little piece of sandpaper folded over. Can you see the ghost image on there? Well, that is the line that is part of the cylinder. That's what's round. So now all we got to do is take off everything that isn't round. And we end up with sort of a sphere. And you do that a few times. And I'll probably mess this up a little bit, and then I'll show you where you can go wrong. And this is a Thompson tool. I guess I could give him a little bit of a plug. It just has a... I want it to go a little faster. I'm not scared yet. Front row might get scared though. You just have to ease up on this. You can't get too aggressive or you'll go under the ghost line. If you do it right and if you have enough practice, pretty soon you can end up leaving the whole line there. See, now it's cutting cleaner. It's not just trying to grab. I'm getting rid of that, those end pieces. Hmm. Basically, basically a scraper, yeah. It just has a square point with a little bit of a step in it. But it, uh, this tool gets really sharp. And stays pretty sharp. Let's just take this part here and we'll get it down and turn it. You're not going to get an exactly perfect sphere, but you'll get pretty close. Now you can see, now you can see how little the ghost line is, and that's the problem. It's can I see that good enough? Can I take that out without going too far? Hmm. Almost by sound. Yeah, almost, yeah, because you can feel it. But see, now we got. Sort of looking round, looking pretty round. But if your setup is not right, what you'll then see is ridges on it. But you can turn a little bit and chase that off too. But we got, it's not a bad looking sphere yet. But I won't take that. But now it's fitting in there more solid. Come on, baby. Let's see. Well, Sharon, tell me when you get scared. <laughs> yeah, you should have your... You got a hard hat? <laughs> oh. But I'm still just chasing that little bit of a ghost. Now it's where I can barely see it. I just kind of have to go by feel and, like you said, sound. There went a chunk of something off. I think the hole got bigger. But see, we're getting... Yeah, there's where it came out. 
See, we're getting the sphere guts a little bit there. Still got some of our, and it's fitting better in the cup each time. Move it a little bit more. Now it's looking like a bowling ball, though. Pardon? Yes. Is it, when it first fits in there, it's only going to be hitting on maybe two points, and then the rounder it gets, the better it feels there. But you do have to watch out for that you don't bottom out. That you got a deep enough bottom because if you bottom out, all it's going to do is it'll just keep moving, and you'll keep pretty soon you'll end up with a ball that gets like that <laughs> because you won't ever hit the. It won't be round. It keeps well. It's not centered good. Let's see, this is going to be about 45. But we're getting there. We're getting there. If I can remember how to, you would think with a simple stop, you would remember how to start it. But mine is over here. And my dust collector is over on that side too, so I keep thinking the wrong way. And I guess it helps to be a little bit ambidextrous on those two being as you're having to go from one side to the other. And for those of you who are, I heard y'all got a bunch of new people here. That's great. One thing you can't do that you, you can, well, I can tell you or you can find out the hard way. You can't sand anything round. The more you sand on it, the more oval it's going to get, or oblong. It, will not, it won't sand round. When you get a ball almost done, like this is pretty much, you don't want to sand any more than you have to because you're going, you know, face grain, side grain, or end grain, and every time they're cutting different, and the more you try to sand it round, the worse it's going to get. You'll have to go back and start over. But that's almost with anything. But you know what? We're... For a punky old ball, it's actually getting round. And we don't have any bad ridges in it. <coughs> Pull the button. <laughs> don't push it. And you can see there's not much ghost left. Actually, this is probably where I would start sanding and doing finishing on it. So any super questions on doing a sphere?